everyone, friends. Welcome to the March 2024 episode of the Seedling Stitch Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Athena. I am a Chinese knitter living in Vancouver, Canada. And uh, this is my little space on the internet where I chat all about my recent knitting projects and also some knitting related books, patterns, acquisitions, creativity, like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I also work here on weekends uh, on Sundays only at our local yarn store called the Wet Coast Wools. So if you ever visit Vancouver, uh, maybe you can find me there. And I'd really love to meet some of my audience. Uh, I've actually might, met quite a few uh, viewers of my channel during my time working at the yarn store. And also it's I, in my opinion, in my biased opinion, it's the best uh, best yarn store in Vancouver. So uh, I really hope you may be able to visit one day. Uh, and also, uh, just at the beginning, I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have been watching and supporting my channel. Uh, especially some of uh, my viewers say that you are like me, are also not a native English speaker, but you are able to understand my podcast because as a non-native, English speaker, I speak more slowly and use easier vocabulary, so um, it's more approachable for you. So I'm, I've, I've, I've only thought like my non native speaker to be like a disadvantage of doing these English podcasts, but re I really appreciate your comments that it gives me more confidence to uh, make more of this show. And also, I really appreciate the opportunity to you know as an immigrant in canada i like to like talk about my creation that's inspired both by chinese culture and the um, canadian or english culture like be a bridge between the two worlds uh, i think I, I really enjoy doing this. Uh, so I just want to say a big thank you for following along my show and supporting what I do here. Um, yeah, so that's all the beginning part. And I today I have a lot to show you as always. So without further ado, uh, please grab your knitting or snacks or any entertainment and I'll start with today's episode. Okay, let me start with what I am wearing today. Uh, this beautiful sweater blouse is my recent Finnish object. Uh, the pattern is called Rosento sweater, uh, designed by Ekaterina Vorobeva, also known as this cozy nest on Instagram. Uh, you can find this pattern on Ravelry and I think her Etsy shop. Uh, I've knitted her pattern once before. I've done the Provence top last last summer, I think. I, I really love her patterns. I think she has some really nice lace details uh, or um, cable or color work details and not too much. I think it's like a good balance of lace. <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, I've done quite a few modifications of this one, so I'll be able to talk about that. Uh, and I'll talk about the yarn first. This is using two strands of silk mohair. Um, the silk mohair I got is a Chinese yarn from Shiku, uh, but it's very similar in terms of texture and weight um, compared to those silk mohair you can get at your local yarn store, like uh, tin silk mohair from Sandy's Garn or the Knitting for Olive silk mohair or Drops Kid silk. So whatever silk mohair you can get is usually quite similar. Like maybe some of them are more uh, like scratchier, but in terms of like the finished product is pretty much the same. Uh, the color is <laughs> kind of unique to the brand. It's called Ban Se. It literally translates to half of a color. Uh, it's kind of like a lilac, purple, light purple, pink color. And I really like how like fade out this is. It's like not too saturated, not too much, but there's also something. Um, and I chose to knit this pattern partially just because of the all beautiful all overlays and the 
light airy texture uh, the original pattern was knitted i think in drops air uh, which is sort of like a chainette alpaca cotton kind of yarn uh, it's thicker and instead i chose to use double strand of silk mohair so it's more airy and light um, the original pattern it was more um, so the lace was the same but the collar and the cuff and the like the hem were all in the regular one by one ribbing and this was my modification but also uh, the designer herself she reported she reposted uh, one of the finished objects by another knitter and uh, I'll put uh, the other knitter's picture here and she also did this kind of modification with a pico edge and I, I just I was really drawn to it uh, i think for her it was meant for like uh, a blouse for her wedding and it was so beautiful so <laughs> i wanted something like that for myself as well uh, and since i got the silk mohair yarn i decided to do that um, the i changed the gauge a little bit as well the original pattern because they were using the drops air so it's a bit thicker it was on i think on a 4.5 millimeter needle on the main body and for me i think with double strand of mohair i don't want it to be too see-through so i used a four millimeter needle uh, all on the main uh, lace uh, pattern and uh, i chose to knit the size m so i size I knitted one size larger to make actually like I usually knit size S so uh, so it ended up to have the measurements of a size S uh, and also I've done like a double strand of mohair type of uh, project I did the fortune sweater by putting knit a few years a couple years ago and for that one it was perfect with four millimeter needle so I, the stitch counts of the body was similar of the size M of Rosanto compared to the size F, uh, size S of the uh, fortune sweater. So I think it would work and it did work. So that's the nice part. Uh, and uh, yeah, the lace was really pretty. I, I really like this kind of lace with um, a lot of stockinette and not too much lace maybe I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit it's just it's a very pretty lace <laughs> I, I really just want to show off the texture uh, and in terms of construction it's a top-down raglan so this is the raglan line and you increase well putting uh, establishing the lace pattern and there's some uh, back shaping with a short row uh, I think she used like a regular short row where you yarn over and then knit two together something like that um, I'm just more familiar with German short row so I just substitute with German short row where uh, the way to substitute is just to um, compared to that version I just knit one more stitch then turn compared to the uh, the other short row method so that worked out okay uh, and I think you are probably here for the <laughs> modification of the cuff and the color so I'll talk about that uh, so to do this kind of pico edge you uh, what I did was to knit like I cast on the for the collar. I cast on the same number of stitches as instructed, and then I knit in stockinette for I think five rounds. And the next round, I knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, and do do a round like that. And then I knit another five rounds of. Uh, the stuck in that just only knit and then I uh, pick up the cast on edge uh, pick up stitches on the cast on edge and knit them together with my current live stitches so it's like a double folded hem um, 
sort of sort of thing. So I knit the custom edge together with my current live stitches, and the and the row where you did the lace, it will appear as this little pico edge, and then you just keep working the same way. Uh, and uh, just to have this gathering effect, I also thread in an uh, elastic thread in the cast like in the row where I knit the custom edge together with the live stitches so it has this gathering effect uh, otherwise the color will it's it kind of get looser and looser if I don't do that uh, so I think this is a uh, nice looking color and that's the general way of doing this kind of pico edge uh, but since here uh, I, I actually had another a uh, more convenient method of doing that. So at the cast on, instead of doing the regular cast on, I used a type of provisional cast on. I actually did the Turkish cast on. So I had, uh, instead of a, a, a edge, I have live stitches around the, I have some stitches on the needle uh, where I did the cast on, just so that when I'm folding it, and knitting the uh, beginning, the cast on part and the live stitches together, I don't have to pick up stitches around my cast on uh, edge. And I'm not sure if you can understand. If you cannot, um, just just ignore it. the The basic method works just fine. Uh, all right, and uh, that's for the color. And then for the uh, sleeve, because uh, I want to have this puff. Uh, kind of um, popcorn? No, what, what's it called? It's called a puff sleeve, right? Because uh, I want to have the puff effect. What I did was I did a round of decrease where I did um, like knit it together, knit it together, knit it together in one round. And in the next round, I increase the stitches back. Like I knit one, increase one, knit one, increase one, knit one, increase one. So the stitch, so it, there was like a rapid decrease and then a rapid increase and then I did the same way as the pico edge, like the double folded thing. Uh, and uh, to do this double fold, uh, to, to fold this double, I actually I just bind off the edge and then use an, an, another thread to sew them together because I find that if you bind off as well as knitting the two layers together, it tends to get very tight and you can almost not put your hand through that. Uh, so that's the trick. And I also put in an elastic thread so you can see there's a little bit of elasticity here. Um, just so that I can easily put my hand through the sleeve and uh, uh, also maintain this kind of puff sleeve effect. Uh, and uh, same thing, I did the same thing for the bottom hem, uh, but I didn't do the decrease and increase as here. I just, um, the stitch number were the same as where I uh, finished the lace, and then I did a double folded hem, uh, so the uh, so the bind off edge with the with with the row where I started doing the um, the pico edge, and then put an elastic thread in, so it will um, like collapse in on itself like this. So I think it's a very nice blouse. Uh, the sleeve length is it's sort of like a three quarter length, and uh, it has a very airy light texture. I love the color. I think I, I like everything about this blouse. Uh, yeah, I think I talk about all the technical things. I hope I didn't scare you away. Sometimes I'm kind of like a knitting nerd where I talk a lot of, of technical things. Um, maybe it's helpful to you or let me know if you just want to see my beautiful knits without me talking about these nerdy stuff. I get quite excited when like talking about techniques. Uh, okay, uh, so this is my Rosendo sweater and I'll move on to talking about my other finished products. The next one I want to talk about is a sock. Is this my knitter uh, sock? <laughs> So uh, this one, uh, the 
uh, the pattern, I mean, the inspiration is from the book 52 Weeks of Socks, Volume 2. There is one pattern called uh, the Tennis Socks. It looks exactly like this, but it was knitted from a uh, cuff down. But I just basically took the, their finished product as an inspiration and uh, changed that to toe up just because I, I love knitting toe up socks. It's my preferred construction. Uh, I have my own uh, sock pattern, uh, no frills toe up socks on Ravelry if you ever want to knit toe up socks. Oh, I just. I'm just more familiar with my own sock pattern and in the toe up construction you don't need to pick up stitches so that's that's just what I'm familiar with and this, this um, for this sock I use the uh, two by two ribbing option for uh, from my no frills toe up socks and uh, the heel the heel part in the uh, in my pattern, it was a slip stitch heel, but <laughs> based on the 52 weeks of socks, the tennis socks, uh, they just used the plain stockinette heel, so I just do, did a plain stockinette heel. Uh, and then there's some color work with the, uh, with the word knitter. Uh, I think the original pattern, there was like 52 stitches per round and for me just I know my own size is 56 stitches per round so I changed the their charts a little bit by adding this little thing uh, just by adding this little like filler uh, filler color work and then doing that so basically I up, up till here, I just adhere to my own basic sock pattern and then I think I knitted three rounds in the blue and then two more rounds in the base in the background color and then did the knitter <laughs> color work chart and two more rounds of the background color, three more rounds of the uh, blue and then change back to the um, change back to the double ribbing. And then here, it is a double folded hem. So I think I knitted six rounds in the green and then uh, bind off. And then uh, I use the backward stitch to sew the, like, sew the row where I started knitting in green together with my bind off edge just to form this little um, hem. And I think in the original pattern, because it's cuff cuff down is like knitting a few rows and then uh, knit the live stitch with the cast on edge together something like that it's just my guess uh, yeah so that's my knitter socks and I don't know if in the original pattern you can like you can wear two socks and oh sorry and connect the uh, the word like this uh, so what I did was to uh, for the color work uh, one sock I started at the like the top of the instep like the middle of the instep and the other sock I started my color work from the back of my heel just so that they are kind of reversed and then when you are wearing them you can stand <laughs> stand like this and form the word knitter and uh, in terms of the yarn the this this main uh, the background main color yarn was uh, uh, gifted by unit uh, I talked more about the gift yarn la from my last episode it is uh, the Mondium of Retro Resoria uh, it's a pure wool sock yarn so it's kind of interesting and with this like blue uh, green kind of speckles and I think it looks kind of great and then the 
of green and the blue color is just some random stash sock yarn that I found in my stash so not much to talk about that and yeah I really love this pair of socks and it wears great I mean I only wore it a few times so I don't know like if the pure wool sock yarn will last so I will report back to you when I get to wear it a bit more okay I'll go to my next finished pro uh, project it's a little hat and uh, it's really colorful and it has some beautiful uh, like flowery uh, crown like that uh, so the pattern is from the colorwork queen designer uh, Marie Wallen the pattern is called Tarn Tam uh, I think from uh, I think from one of her new newer books called uh, uh, Cumbria uh, but you can also buy this pattern separately on Ravelry so uh, the motivation of knitting this hat is well I have quite a few uh, Pharrell colorwork hats I can show you <laughs> just a chance to show off you know uh, so I had this one uh, this colorwork beret designed by Kaza Kobo a Japanese designer from some years ago so it looks like this I really, I really like this but I'll, I'll tell you the problem in a moment and then uh, in last autumn I knitted this one the uh, dark crofter cap uh, using some of my leftover yarn uh, but now it's spring I kind of don't want to wear this anymore like the color it's beautiful but the color it's it's just not spring it's very autumn it's very um, like ombre it's very it's kind of dark and like it, it's just not a spring vibe and I don't wa want to wear this much with the spring and the flowers blooming so I want to have a hat that's more like for spring well this one is for spring uh, but it is a beret shape and uh, if you've been following me you know I started biking um, in the recent years and I I like a hat that can fit under my biking helmet and this just doesn't fit under my biking helmet although it looks very nice very cute so uh, I want a spring colored uh, toque so <laughs> I got this and uh, I think I could have knitted another duck crofter cap using a different colorway but uh, I I, I just hate knitting the same pattern twice except socks so <laughs> so I, I got the Mary Wallen um, hat pattern and uh, knitted this one so the original um, color scheme is um, they, they, she has two color schemes one is for men it's all like blue brown uh, gray that kind of color and then there's another for a woman it's more like a pink green um, yellow uh, light gray or white that sort of color uh, but using Marie Wallen's own yarn and I, I, I just want to finish my <laughs> stash I have like a lot of leftover scrap yarns from my random fair L projects over the years and so I, I just uh, dig around my stash and found random colors uh, most most of these like joyful purpley and green color and gray color yarn were from my fair L vest um, this was I think two years ago uh, this was my first Shetland slash fair L uh, vest project designed by Japanese designer Kazakobo uh, I'm so proud of it and I had uh, this project used the uh, Jamie Sen's uh, spring, spring drift yarn and it, it, the yarn is so good and I, I ended up having a lot of leftovers of so of some of these blue and purple and green and uh, gray colors so uh, yeah so I just 
<laughs> so I uh, use some of those and there's also some like these blue and yellow colors were from the uh, this project this project were from my Ophelia vest uh, I didn't bring it today but um, you can probably see them from my previous episodes so anyway I uh, I assembled my own colorway um, using my stash yarn and if you would like some tips for making your own uh, color schemes uh, one of the key is to uh, use a monochrome filter in your camera like just open your phone and get a filter there is usually a monochrome filter kind of like that and then you point this point your camera to your stash yarn and then you can see the contrast like the you can separate your stash yarn into light colors and dark colors and then um, in your target pattern from the target pattern you can always see there's a background color and the foreground color the foreground color is where it's it's like like these leaves or these stars it's like what's what's popping out once you separate your light color and dark color and you can assemble for example the dark color as the foreground color and the light color as your background color or the other way around if you want to have like a darker um, uh, like a darker hat color scheme so um, that's kind of how I did it how I do it like I you I the point is to uh, whenever you assemble two colors uh, on one row one is the foreground the other is the background and you need those two colors to have enough contrast and to see if you have enough contrast you use a monochrome camera so hope that's useful uh, and is there anything about the hand uh, I uh, in the pattern the she has a women version and a men version like a small version and a large version um, I cast all the stitch numbers of the large version but then I for the color work part I uh, adjusted to the stitches of the small version because I, I just feel like the, the custom stitches for the small version it's very few there are very few stitches and I compared with like all my other hats they cast on more stitches so I just feel more confident if I cast on a bit more stitches and I think I, I did the right choice it's 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 a little bit loose but it's what I want I don't want the like the ham to be really 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 s sticky to my uh, to my head so I think it's 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 a good it's a good size of a hat and it did fit under my biking helmets and it's very joyful like when I'm wearing this I was jokingly say that I feel like a walking flower yeah I look really joyful so yeah uh, that's the tarn tam and let me talk about my next finished object and it's this one is just a little scarf it's a large triangle scarf one can wear it double like that So this one I just want to show you a bit closer uh, is it looks sort of like Sophie's scarf but it's not uh, there are uh, there it, it's more I don't know what kind of stitch it's called I have like four round uh, four rows of the stockinette and then four rows of uh, pearl basically if, if you see from one side it's four rows of uh, knit and four rows of pearl see, seeing from one side but it's uh, yeah it's knitted flat um, with an eye cord edge it's very similar in terms of construction as the Sophie scarf uh, it's the only different part is <laughs> the, the stitch pattern so this one uh, it's it's, it sort of has an inspiration based pattern uh, I saw this pattern called the solo scarf uh, I kind of forgot the designer I'll type it here 
uh, it's it's basically this uh, I didn't get the pattern I just saw the photo and I think it's a nice change from Sophie's scarf because for Sophie's scarf it's garter stitch right and with garter stitch on each side you can only see the pearl bumps and I don't like seeing that much pearl bumps uh, I, I like seeing the the V's from the uh, the knit stitches <laughs> and with this solo scarf kind of pattern it's there there are you the knit stitches are more visible and apart from that it's exactly same as the Sophie scarf well I don't know what the actual solo scarf were knitted like but in, in my opinion I think it's probably just a different version of the Sophie scarf with this uh, four rows of knit four rows of pearl it, it's all the difference and uh, in terms of increase and decrease I think I, I increase uh, every eight rows w one stitch every eight rows on one side of the triangle and then decrease uh, eight a uh, one stitch every eight rows until uh, I get at the tip and uh, this one is just a stash busting project I just want to finish with this yarn I actually finished this one last night and <laughs> I haven't even washed and blocked it I think after the wash and blocking it will be longer and I will be able to see the niche knit stitch much better uh, this yarn I I'm knitted the uh, the the what's what's this called the grandma core hood by Kudova Kika uh, and then I just had some left over and I just want to finish I just want to knit this the leftover of this yarn to something and so I decided on this so basically when I uh, I weigh the leftover yarn I had and when I ha I have used half I started doing the decreasing and it's perfect I have zero of this yarn left so it's 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 really perfect um, and it's kind of wearable uh, the yarn is a Chinese um, yarn is Shi Ke Yun Tuan. It's like a chinette, cotton wool, acrylic kind of yarn with this beautiful um, Chinese painting like almost. Uh, yeah, the Chinese ink painting kind of uh, coloring. So I think it does look great and it's also like with the uh, longer garter stitch pattern. I really don't know what this stitch pattern is called. Um, let, let me know in comment if you do know. So yeah, I, I like how the color variegation appears on this stitch pattern. And it's it's a nice length. It's kind of spring, like it's kind of like a spring color. So I, I won't feel like too weird to wear it during the early spring, like in colder weathers of the spring. So I finished it right in time. Uh, okay, uh, moving on to the next finished object. Uh, uh, it's not much, it's just a bouclier yarn leg warmer. I think I showed it in my last episode. Uh, it's, it's with a bouclier yarn, um, also from the Shiku brand uh, it's called Yun Quan Quan but yeah you can get any kind of bouclier yarn and it's really warm it's really cute and uh, it goes well with my Birkenstocks um, yeah uh, if you don't know I'm a huge Birkenstock fan and some of the Birkenstock they don't have a heel uh, so uh, it, it, like it, there's no covering part around the heel so the heel gets colder and with the leg warmer it can warm the heel so that that's just the point of this it's like it's, it's a utility project and uh, there's no pattern I just like, cast on 58 56 stitches and then uh, decrease to 48 stitches and then increase to 58 stitches again to to fit to fit my leg yeah <laughs> there, there, there's really not much to it okay so that's all my finish objects and I'll move on to talk about my work in progress projects uh, the first one I want to talk about is uh, this piece oh wow look at the cable it's wow <laughs> it, it's very oh yeah it's very pretty okay this is a mysterious project uh, so 
this is going to be a cardigan. Uh, I designed the pattern. I designed the stitch pattern as well. So recently I've been watching the HBO TV series Succession and uh, it's, uh, it's a really good show. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. Uh, the plot line is like a really rich American <laughs> a family and it's the like a family drama um, yeah you may say that I'm not a millionaire why do I why do I care about them but it's it's less about owning a lot of money it's more about even they own that much money they still have the same family issue <laughs> between you know daughters sons and dads as you know everybody else <laughs> and there's yeah there's a lot of like psychology like trauma uh anxiety like that kind of thing against like a business world kind of backdrop in new york and helicopters and stuff yeah so <laughs> that's kind of a summary of the show and there is um a old money dad figure logan roy and he likes to wear this this kind of shawl color cardigan with cables and you know as a knitter I'm naturally I'm naturally attracted to all the beautiful sweaters that he wears like he, he's not a, like a positive kind of character he's actually like a, a, a very like powerful and bad kind of character. I, I don't have the vocabulary for that. Um, and in the opening credit, he wears a cardigan like that. I'll just put a screenshot there. Uh, it's, it's just such a powerful cardigan. It looks so nice. And, and I, I want to feel that powerful. <laughs> I want I just want to recreate that cardigans so I started and uh, I I happen to have a yarn that's very similar t in terms of texture and color to that uh, so this one is the Donegal uh, from Donegal yarns in Ireland it's called mohair tweed it's in their worsted weight I got them from wet coast wools the yarn store that I work at I think we are like one of the couple places that you can got you can get Donegal yarns in Canada it is as far as I know I was really excited when I got the yarn I think I got them actually earlier last year and I really just want to save it to something good I had a lot of ideas on what I should knit this yarn into like what sweaters I just I want really a oh, strong statement worthy cable cardigans and I've seen like I've had a few ideas of what pattern that I want to knit but then I saw Logan Roy's cardigan and it's like that's it I want to knit that even if I don't have a pattern even if I only have these screenshots from the show I'm gonna knit it so yeah <laughs> so, so so that's the story that's the story I, I uh, and the the color is called blueberry I think it's, it's a really beautiful color and it has these uh, like bl like white kind of speckles um, the, the camera the camera it it always it, it changes the exposure so it's, it's a blueberry color but once 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 I once I'm showing you this for a few seconds it's changing the color maybe if I only show you my swatch it will be better it's still oh it's still it still changed the color oh I hate that anyway I tried to figure out the cable pattern by myself and I, I drew a few uh, drafts and then I knit a few swatches until I finished with this swatch which I'm really happy with I think this really captures the it's it's sort of like a Celtic cable like it has those complicated traverse lines but it's not too much it's not like too it's too complicated I, like I always try to find a good balance of the complicated part and the strong statement worthy part in the knitting patterns uh, and yeah there it is uh, and and then uh, I and I just based <laughs> based on the screenshots it's like a drop shoulder so uh, I 
designed um, so I designed that this is the back panel I'm knitting this flat this will be the back panel and then uh, I knitted the front panel as well I'm still working on this so this is the right front panel there is like a V kind of neck shaping and then uh, I will knit the shawl collar separately uh, with like a one by one ribbing and then uh, sew them together and for the shawl collar I found the perfect reference so this is the Japanese Keito Dama magazine the Chinese translation version I found one of the designs it's this one and although it's not exactly the same the shawl collar it's exactly what I want I think this looks exactly the same in terms of shape as the Logan Roy cardigan and look at this <laughs> grandpa I think he is, he's a perfect model <laughs> for this cardigan and I think I'll just follow uh, like the construction of this color in uh, the Keto Dama so it will be a whole journey and oh and this is the draft of the stitch pattern I draw uh, I think for this pattern uh, I should be able to uh, publish that as just like a recipe only one size not tested um, as I've said in a few of my earlier episodes I like creating patterns designing and knitting something unique for myself but I just don't have the head space and energy to write them into the formal patterns so I'll probably just like publish the the one size pattern with quite minimal instructions and um, if you are a more of an advanced knitter or maybe from watching my explanation in the podcast you might be able to use it uh, or adapt that just adapt the stitch pattern into anything like into a scarf I don't mind into a hat uh, to something you want to knit so yeah I think I think knitting pattern there should be more you know free free creativity in that uh, yeah so that's the that's where this pattern this project is going oh, this this color is so beautiful it's, it really looks like the blueberry yeah, I really look forward to finishing this pattern and be an old money daddy <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, all right so that's the Logan Roy power cardigan and then the next one uh, it's the next uh, whip is a half finish object slash whip so it's a mitten uh, and again this is sort of like my own creation this is for my husband so it's much bigger so somebody said it looks like an oven mitten for me they did <laughs> so uh, yeah so uh, in my previous episode I've knitted a like five finger glove for my husband uh, for 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 him to bike, we we both love biking, and uh, that one turn it, it's good. But like just because the fingers are separated, the insulation is not good as good as this type of you know uh, triangle mittens. So I just want to knit him one. I recently happened to stumble upon a beautiful stitch pattern from my vintage book. This one is. Uh, Shanghai Bangzhen Bian Jie Hua Yang Wu Bai Zhong. So, Shanghai uh, Knitting Stitch Pattern Dictionary, there are 500 of them. So, it's a very vintage book from the 1980s that I luckily got from uh, my university professor when I was uh, doing university in Shanghai. And it's, oh, it's, it's so good. They have so many diversified stitch patterns uh, there are you know like cables lace and color work and uh, draw out stitch and there are quite a, quite a lot of complicated stitches and there are you know samples of like how you can use the stitch pattern to knit them into uh, patterns and I happened to found this one it's kind of like Scandinavian maybe uh, and that's the stitch uh, that's the chart and I just I, I kind of want to knit this into 
into something, into a Faraday project, or since I happen to want to knit a mitten, I want to knit a, I change it to a mitten. Uh, it turns out that the, this, this, there are not enough stitch, there aren't enough stitches to uh, for a mitten. Uh, for my mitten, there are I think I put 36 stitches or something. Um, I don't remember. So I, I just need to make this one a bit wider. So uh, you, you can, by comparing, you can sort of see the change. It, it's sort of similar, but this is a, a, bit, a bit wider. There are more things going on. Like if you see this one and this thing, I just like expand the, uh, the original vintage pattern into a mitten. And uh, the bottom part, this part, is also adapted from this stitch pattern book. I really just want to, uh, you know, revive, like re, uh, like have a renaissance of the vintage Chinese <laughs> knitting book. So uh, it's this, but I squish it a little bit to make it into this. So yeah, so that's what I did. And uh, for the thumb, it's still it's. It's like a reduced version, a mini version of, you know, of the main um, snowflake kind of pattern. And yeah, so, and on the bottom there's the pico edge. So I've talked about how to do pico edge, so now you know. And then this thing is the uh, Latvian braid. Um, if you search for how to do Latvian braid, it's not that, dif not, that, not that difficult. It's basically just pearl on the front of your work. Uh, so I, in terms of construction, I have uh, this as reference. Um, these mittens are for me, the designer or mitten ya from a Japanese uh, mitten book designed by mitten ya. And uh, so I just sort of followed the construction of this mitten, you know, with the pico edge, the Latvian braid, and some uh, some <laughs> some smaller patterns, and then a bigger mitten pattern, and then change that into uh, the vintage, uh, change the pattern into the vintage pattern from my Shanghai, from my Chinese. Uh, vintage knitting books, and I really like how this one um, is coming along. In terms of yarn, uh, these are some leftover stash yarns. Uh, the blue yarn is another Chinese yarn, it's uh, Su Su Jie. Uh, they're uh, Shetland yarn. It's like a Shetland and nylon blend. It's really cheap. It's like convert to Canadian dollars. I think it's like two dollar for twenty five grams. So it's kind of crazy. Um, maybe just because of the nylon and the, the quality, of course, it cannot be compared to, you know, the actual Shetland yarn from Jamieson's, but it works. It works. And the white yarn is Hui Guixian Ji Dong, another Chinese yarn. Fingering weight wool. The brown colored yarn is um, from my grandma's stash. She gifted uh, to me, and I've used it for a lot of random projects. So, but I still have leftovers. I think it's it's a nice color scheme. All right, going forward, I just have one more whip, and again, it's a half whip. It's a sock. It's a lounge sock. Ta-da! Uh, you know, I've, I, I just showed my finished leg warmer with the boucle yarn. I really love how that turned out. So uh, I, I used the, there's more of them. So I just want to knit them into like a pair of lounge socks. Um, these, this yarn is like a sports weight. I, uh, for the sock, I use 3.25 millimeter needles. And also I'm doing I'm sort of doing a version of my no frills toe up socks, um, but instead of usually 56 stitches, I used um, I think 48 stitches per round for the you know for the foot part and the uh, leg part. Uh, so just yeah, just change the stitch numbers a little bit. Um, there's not much to say. It's really comfy for this one. I finish and then I'll just keep working on that one. Okay, so 
that's all <laughs> that's all my knitting projects and i also have some knitting related acquisition to show you this episode uh, and i just got some uh chinese uh, slash japanese knitting books to show you uh, so these are uh, so these are actually a gift from the uh, publisher so the editor of these books so like chinese weaving publisher uh, their editor got in contact with me they want to send me some books uh, in exchange for my honest review so um, that's what it came from uh, but actually these are uh, translated from um, Japanese or uh, English these books so uh, for the English translation you might be able to find them uh, I'll show you one by one uh, so this book uh, contains some cute knitting uh, color work patterns and this is a little catalog there are like random animals like uh, elephants and pandas and also like lollipops and there are also some lace and cable patterns so it's quite versatile like there's some flowers oops animals pandas oh there's a dragon i think these are very much like for it's it's more kid like than it, I think it's it's more for younger people's knitting. I think I kind of like grow out of this book a little bit. But I think these uh, Aaron cable patterns and lace patterns are still quite usable. Um, like these ones are still quite uh, adaptable to you know garments like that and there are some nice lace patterns oh there are some, yeah yeah the flower like if you adapt them into a little camisole or summer t-shirts in linen yarn that would be great the flowers uh yeah and then there it's, it's a stitch pattern book uh, the next one again is a Japanese translated knitting book it's animal animal print accessory color color workbooks and this is a little catalog uh, and there are some mittens hats and bags and uh, cup warmers I think are, there are some impressive color work hats I think the mittens look really nice especially this little bird one um I think what was one that I like oh is this oh this is a little sheep <laughs> but it's kind of hard to hard to see <laughs> it's a sheep and bird uh so that's this one and then this is from uh translated from english uh, 200 uh fair l patterns so you can definitely buy the original one in english but since you know they they send me so it's it's a nice reference book for uh, a lot of color work uh, feral knitting techniques including sticking oh uh, yeah i'm actually interested in reading through the sticking um sticking instructions as i have my own method of sticking but maybe uh, she has a different one maybe that could work better for me and then she talked about like how to choose colors for far traditional feral projects and then it's just a very comprehensive stitch pattern like with the knitted samples against the chart uh, of these ones and in including in different color ways so i think it's a nice reference book if i ever i'm gonna design my own uh, color work so that's all my knitting related content and at the end of my podcast i usually just like to chat a little bit about myself and uh, my other hobbies and specifically uh, recently since i started my new job uh, and it's kind of stable i feel like i have the head space and energy to um, start on a few other hobbies i'm trying to stay more active and take more care of about myself uh, I'm starting to do more 
uh, physical activities. I'm like taking some bar and dance and yoga and Pilates lessons recently, and that's been yeah i think that's been giving me a bit more energy and um, that's good uh, but also there might be <laughs> less time for knitting but that's also good because i need to have a healthier body to be able to knit and create more and uh, i also started reading um, listening to audiobooks so in this last bit i'd also like to give you a little bit of book recommendation uh, just to chat about my um, like in the past month or so what of uh, what favorite books i have been reading um, yeah so uh, <laughs> here's my notes um, the first book i'd like to recommend is called maybe you should talk to someone by laurie gottlieb uh, it is sort of like a biography book about um, this is a therapist uh, psycho psychotherapist who uh, it, it's about her her own therapy session with her own therapist and also uh, she herself as a therapist her session with her clients and uh, just from these interviewing stories of uh, these therapy sessions how um, these the clients and herself uh, have grown as a person and it's it's I think it's a really nice put together book and featuring some emotional stories that's quite touching and inspiring so uh, and also I think this book is getting me thinking of trying therapy for myself um, yeah I, th I think like therapy it, just from reading this book I feel like therapy is not necessarily for those who are in deep depression or deep anxiety like even if you just are seeking personal growth and you want to know yourself and to be able to grow and develop a bit better um, that could be a good place and also like and I know even for my personal life I want to get better with a lot of um, like relationships with family and friends and to just improve myself as a person uh, so I think maybe therapy would help myself with that and yeah so I'm taking in some action to try therapy uh, and from reading this book and highly recommend it and next book I really loved in the past month is called tomorrow 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 by Gabriel Zevin uh, it is a uh, fiction about uh, two friends making video games uh, in terms of topic it's kind of like unique stories you don't read much about you know uh, <laughs> stories about making video games uh, it, it's kind of like a modern topic uh, but also the like the char the characters uh, they feature some like Asian or Asian Jewish mixed um, characters so there's like there's all it, it also touch on topics about you know uh, racism um, you know feminism because you know there there is a female character who's making the video games and um, you know females in video game industry is is still not like it's, it's still not females dominant field and it, it touch on topics like that uh, and it also talks about uh, video games as a form of art yes and also the resemblance of video games with real life and there's also uh, a lot of it's very it's an emotional book there's about friendship dealing with trauma life and death um, yeah it's it's quite a packed book and it's written beautifully um, and there's like this parallel between the video games that the characters make and their real life and their own um, problem uh, with their relationships and then the characters they're just so raw and so real and also if you play video games and it would be fun for you to read the like there are quite some interesting commentaries on video games from this uh, this fiction so highly recommend and uh, 
Another one is a romance, like a rom-com book. It's called Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lee's. Uh, yeah, I don't always read like strong emotional <laughs> literature. <laughs> I also enjoy reading like more lightweight, lighthearted, uh, joyful rom-com because like they, they make me happy just like seeing two people in love. Like my old heart, <laughs> like, I've been in this stable relationship. There's not much excitement exciting thing in my own relationship like we are like water but like just reading some of these room calls make my heart flutter and uh, that's a good feeling and for this uh, this book to rounds make a right specifically it features some um, neurodivergent characters and characters with mental illness uh, and also uh, it features lgbtq characters it gives you a bit more perspective and uh, if you want to have some easier read like as a non-native speaker i find these rom counts are more approachable like the vocabularies are easier the stories are um, lighter so it's like whenever I want to listen to some easier audiobooks to make myself feel good so I go to these rom coms uh, okay so that's my book recommendations uh, that's all the stuff I want to chat about in this episode if you enjoy the episode please don't forget to like and comment and if you haven't consider subscribing and i keep a revelry and instagram account where i post um, all my projects notes i also have a ko-fi page and if you just like to donate me a couple dollars for you know for a coffee or the ball of yarn uh, that would be highly appreciated and i thank you for those who have already donated or uh, bought my pattern uh, thank you, thank you for your support. And at the end of my episodes, I usually play a bit of piano. Uh, recently, I've been playing a video game called Alter Wells. Uh, it's about a space alien exploring space and discovering uh, ancient puzzles and history. And to, yeah, so it's 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 very fun. It's it's very artsy, and it, it's 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 a beautiful game. It's all. I want to say and I'm just gonna play a bit of the main title theme if you play video games check it out <laughs> okay uh, thank you for watching take care of yourself and enjoy your knitting see you next time bye mm -hmm.